Hello and welcome to Baiju's exam prep. Welcome to another session in our knowledge series where we shall be talking about inversion of temperature. Now inversion of temperature or temperature inversion in itself is one of those climatic conditions and climatic phenomena which ends up influencing the majority parts of the globe during the winter season and also during certain specialized conditions. Now this temperature inversion has got very severe impacts on the life cycle around us. Many of the times they are also deemed to be responsible for even formation of deserts in certain parts of the globe. So in this video, we shall be trying to understand what this inversion of temperature is. What is it we that call the inversion of temperature per se? Why does it happen? And what are the various different types of temperature inversion that we come across? So without further ado, let us begin by first of all understanding what do we mean by this inversion. After all, temperature is a measurement, measurement of heat. So what do we call as inversion of temperature? So that has got something to do with the variation of temperature in the atmosphere as we move higher up above from the surface of the planet. Under general circumstances, under general scenario, we observe that if this is the surface of the planet, as we move higher up, the temperature tends to reduce. The temperature tends to reduce. This is under general circumstances. This reduction or change in temperature with the change in altitude, that is what is also referred to as the lapse rate. Under normal environmental conditions, the lapse rate ends up indicating a change of temperature by around 6.5 degrees Celsius with 1 kilometer change in altitude. That is, if let's say we move 2 kilometers above from the surface, the temperature would roughly fall by around 13 degrees Celsius. So this is the normal condition. But under certain specific conditionalities, this process is reversed. And under certain specific conditionalities, we end up experiencing the fact that closer to the ground surface, we have cooler temperature. And as we go higher up, we have warmer air. Now, as you can observe, this is just the opposite of what we experience under normal lapse rate. So this condition where you have inversion of where you have the warm air placed and where we have the cold air placed, that is the condition which we refer to as temperature inversion. Now this temperature inversion that can happen because of multitude of reasons and also in various different places. Depending upon how this conditionality is attained, that is how we end up dividing the temperature inversion into various different types. Now please understand that this process of inversion of temperature is not a permanent phenomena. It is a rather very temporary phenomena which comes into existence and again it dissipates with the resumption of normal conditions. Now this temperature inversion, it can be classified as surface inversion or upper air inversion or frontal inversion or valley inversion. Now each of this classification that you see, that purely ends up determining how that process of inversion has happened. How is it that a condition whereby closer to the ground surface you have cooler air, then above that we have the condition of a warmer air and then above warmer air parcel again we can have the cold air. Now why do we need to study this inversion of temperature is because of the property of air in itself. We know that warmer air ends up being lesser in density and thereby ends up becoming lighter and rises up. That is what you observe as a phenomena under general circumstances for warmer air. Whereas the cooler air having a greater density will always tend to become heavier and try to sink down. So under normal conditions of atmosphere, we experience the warmer air which is closest to the surface that tends to rise up. This is the warm air. 
and the cooler air which is situated higher up that cooler air it will have more number of particles per unit volume so it will have a greater weight and that is why the cooler air will try to sink down now this is the normal condition and this allows a kind of a vertical mixing of air mixing of air column now what happens because of this vertical mixing of air column is many of the times few of the pollutants let's say which are present closest to the ground surface they rise up and they are also dispersed but along with that when you have the warm air rising up after reaching a certain altitude it will cool down quite significantly and we might observe condensation leading to the formation of clouds and thereby causing rainfall so even the cloud formation and the rainfall which occurs thereby is because of this very simple property of air where the warm air tries to rise up whereas the cooler air tries to sink down this conditionality of the atmosphere or air parcel in itself that gains the name of unstable air or an unstable air parcel and this unstable air parcel is the one which allows rainfall mixing of air and so on but under the conditions of inversion if you would observe the distribution of cold and the warm air you will find that the warmer air is already above the cooler air so cooler air which generally has the tendency to sink down is already at the bottom whereas the warmer air which has the tendency to rise up is already trapped on top so in this case we have what we refer to as the stability of air column now whenever you have stability of air column you will not be able to achieve mixing of air so that is why during certain winter conditions in certain parts of the country you would observe that the pollutants end up remaining in the atmosphere for a very long duration because there is no vertical mixing and thereby no dissipation of the pollutants happening in that region along with that we also observe a significant lack of rainfall so this is why inversion becomes an important phenomena which does influence us but how is this inversion achieved what are the conditions which lead to various different types of inversion occurring so let us understand each one of them briefly so we shall be starting with the surface inversion now the name in itself tells you this has got something to do with the property of the surface so this kind of inversion is experienced when the surface ends up cooling down quite considerably so this inversion happens because of the property of the surface of surface to lose heat and cool down very quickly now when the surface cools down very quickly the natural tendency will be that the air above it will also cool down so how is it experienced when is it experienced so it is generally experienced during the long winter nights why long winter nights because in the winter months the duration of night time is not only longer but that also allows a larger time period for the earth to be losing heat via terrestrial radiation so let's suppose this is the surface and let's take two conditionalities during the winter months let's take the conditionality one of the conditionalities at 5 pm now during the winter months let's suppose at around 5 pm the temperature is around 14 degrees celsius near the ground surface right above it let's say the temperature at a higher altitude is lesser let's say the temperature comes out to be roughly around 8 degrees celsius now after 5 pm onwards the surface will continue to lose heat now if we consider the conditions during let's say 3 am in the morning or 4 am in the morning or 2 am in the morning 
Now, at that point of time and by that period, the surface would have lost enough amount of heat and the surface would have become very, very cold. Because the land surface in general, there the heat is restricted to only 3 to 5 inches from the surface. So thereby losing of heat becomes a very naturally fast process. So the surface ends up losing heat very, very quickly. Now as the surface begins to lose heat, let's say by around 3 a.m. in the morning, the temperature falls to around 2 degrees Celsius, as is observed in many parts of the northern India during the winter months. Now, as the surface has a temperature of 2 degrees Celsius, the air above it, directly in contact with the surface, will also cool down quite rapidly. So, the air above it, when it cools down rapidly, let's say it garners a temperature of 3 degrees Celsius. Now, at a higher altitude, that air will also cool down but it is not in contact with the cold surface. So despite the fact that it will cool down from 8 degrees C, let's say its temperature has reduced to 5 degrees Celsius. But it is not as cold as the surface in itself. So here you observe that at an altitude you have warmer air, whereas closest to the surface you have cooler air. And this is a condition of inversion. So this kind of inversion, that is surface inversion, is generally experienced during the winter months and that too when you have a cloudless sky. Because when you have a cloud covering, many of the times the clouds, they end up re-radiating back the heat lost by the surface and thereby end up again heating the surface. So if let's say you have a cloud covering on top, so when the earth loses heat in the form of terrestrial radiation, significant amount of that radiation will be reflected back and thereby will warm the surface again. So that is why generally during the long winter nights when we have the clear sky, that is when we end up observing the conditions of surface inversion. In the northern reaches of our country during the winter months, particularly in the conditions or in the months of December and January, we do experience surface inversion to happen. But then, there are other forms and other types of inversion also taking place. So, if you take the case of other types of inversion, for example, you have the upper air inversion. Now, again, the name in itself tells us where this inversion is happening. So, it is happening at a higher altitude. So, in the upper region of troposphere, that is where this inversion is taking place. Now, when you have the inversion taking place at the top of the troposphere or in the higher regions of troposphere, we have two kinds of inversion which is experienced. One is the thermal inversion. It is also referred to as a kind of a static form of inversion. What is this inversion? So here we know the property of troposphere. Troposphere, that is the layer of the earth or layer of the atmosphere which is closest to the surface. So troposphere, as you move higher up, it becomes cooler. And beyond that, we have the stratosphere. Now stratosphere is the one which has got ozone layer in it. And that ozone layer gets heated up quite significantly because of absorption of the UV rays of the sun. So there, stratosphere observes a rise in temperature. Here, the stratosphere is generally warmer, whereas the top of troposphere will be much colder. So this is a condition which is also referred to as an inversion. But this is a form of a permanent inversion in place. So that is why it is not always considered to be a major variable factor of inversion. This is a kind of a permanent phenomena that you come across where stratosphere under normal conditions will always be warmer than the top layer of the troposphere. But then in the upper region of troposphere, sometimes we do observe certain movement of air and that leads to a temperature inversion within the troposphere 
and that is what we refer to as the mechanical upper air inversion or what is also referred to as the subsidence inversion. Now what is this subsidence inversion? Here we observe something very unique and again this is also to be observed in the winter months and where in which regions of the world in the middle or higher latitudes mid latitudes or in higher latitudes that is where you observe this phenomena so what happens during the winter months in mid or higher latitude Obviously, the ground surface will become very, very cold. So, the ground surface becomes cold. Now, within the troposphere itself, this is the top portion of the troposphere. Let's say this is tropopause. Now, within the troposphere itself, sometimes we observe that air masses, they converge and they start sinking down. Now, when they start sinking down, all of a sudden, the air is entering into a territory where that air density is going to be the highest. So, there you will observe that air naturally gets compressed. So, the air, as it tries to come down, the air gets compressed. And whenever you have compression of air, that leads to again in energy and that leads to heating of the air parcel by the factor which we refer to as adiabatic heating. So, this air parcel which is coming from the higher altitude as it comes closer to the surface it gets more and more compressed and eventually as compressed as it gets the more heat it will gain. So, here you will have warmer air and the air gaining temperature because it is being forced to get compressed. But then closer to the surface, because the surface temperature is so low being in mid or higher latitudes and also because of the fact that it is a winter month, you have a cooler air by virtue of being in contact with the cold surface. So that is how here again a condition of inversion is achieved. But this condition of inversion is achieved because of the mechanical subsidence of the air parcel and the air parcel being compressed and thereby undergoing a kind of adiabatic heating and that is why you have the warmer air parcel in existence. Now this condition of mechanical inversion this can persist for certain number of days. It can actually span for almost a week or 10 days. And that can lead to disastrous circumstances and disastrous consequences. You have the pollutants which are released in the atmosphere. They get suspended within the atmosphere in the lower region itself for a very long duration. And that can lead to persistent amount of health hazards and air pollution related illnesses. So that is why mechanical inversion can be very, very dangerous. It is not something which is generally observed in India, but then you have the European countries which have traditionally suffered from this inversion. And in fact, even during the very infamous London smog, which claimed many lives, mechanical inversion was at play. Now, this is what happens in the upper air. But in the mid latitude regions, you have another kind of inversion which happens and that is referred to as a frontal inversion. This is something which again is observed in the mid latitude. Now what is a front? So a front is the boundary zone or the transition zone where two different types of air masses having distinct properties when they end up interacting or meeting with each other. So that zone of transition that is what we refer to as a front. So when we have a cold air mass let's say traditionally an air parcel or a wind which is originating from the polar areas. Now that cold air parcel 
will have a certain property. Colder air will always hug itself closer to the ground surface and thereby it will have a very reduced volume. It will have already a very compressed volume. Whereas if you take a look at the warmer air, warmer air will have much lesser density and hence much greater volume. So here the volume will be higher and this warmer air will always be lighter as well. Whereas the colder air, it will hug itself, stick itself closest to the ground surface and this colder air will also be heavier in nature. Now, whenever you have either the warm air which is active or even the cold air which is active, in either of the cases, the cold air will move in or the warm air will simply rise up above that cold air parcel. So when these will meet and will create a front, you will have the warm air easily riding over the region of cold air. So you will have cold air still sticking to the ground surface because it is heavier, whereas the warm air being lighter in nature, the warm air can easily rise up and climb above that parcel of cold air like an inclined plane. So in this zone of transition or in this area of a front, this is where we have the conditions of inversion because here you will observe closest to the surface, we have a condition of cold air, whereas with an altitude, you have the condition of warm air. So this is observed in frontal areas be it a cold front, be it a warm front, be it an occluded front, in all different kinds of frontal formations which is generally observed in the mid latitude areas where you have cold air coming from the polar region. You have the polar region being a high pressure zone. So cold air comes out and originates from that polar region and warm air originating from the tropical area when they will interact in mid latitude region we do observe this frontal inversion to happen. Then another kind of inversion, this is referred to as a valley inversion. Now this is a kind of inversion which is actually shaped by the topography of the land. So when we talk about the topography in the valley regions, across both ends of the valleys, we have the mountains or let's say the hills, right? Now, during night time, when you consider the temperature conditions above the hills and the valley region, you will come across the fact that valley region being very close to the sea level or comparatively closer to the sea level as compared to the peaks of the hills and the mountains, here you will still have the conditionalities of warmer air being present. We have warmer air. Whereas, when we consider the peaks of the mountains or the peaks of the hills, there the loss of temperature happens at a very fast rate. So here you have, during night time, the presence of cold air in existence. Now, cold air being heavier than the warmer air, cold air naturally falls down and follows the incline. And eventually this cold air will reach the valley bottom because it is colder. It starts acting like a fluid and that fluid dynamics that shapes that cold air or directs that cold air to the base of the valley. And that rush of the cold air eventually ends up creating a circumstance whereby this warmer air is suddenly pushed up. So here again, during night time, you have a condition where you have the presence of cold air at the bottom of the valley, whereas warmer air on top and thereby attaining a condition of inversion. Now, this is the reason why it is always advised that if you have a narrow valley that you come across, never to take shelter in that valley floor. If it is narrow enough, never to take shelter in that valley floor during night time. Because suddenly the temperature can plummet. 
it can also have an influence on the plants and the floral communities. The fruits and the flowers along with the leaves, many of them they die because of sudden frostbite because the valley floor that experiences suddenly very low temperature conditions. However, if that valley has eventually got a passage and has got an exit point through which the cold air can evacuate itself, then the conditions are generally normalized. So that is why when you have broader valleys, valleys having broader floors, there you don't observe this kind of inversion. But wherever you have narrow valleys, there it becomes particularly harsh during night time. Now, other than these impacts of temperature inversion that we have talked about, the temperature inversion, basically because of the condition that it creates a lack of rainfall, because of the stability of air that is achieved, this also brings about desert-like conditions. So, if you take the case of, let's say, suppose the region of South America, and let's say you have South America, and you take the case of western coastline of South America. Now there you have a very cold oceanic current in the Pacific in the form of Peru current. Now this Peru current is very cold. So it cools down the air mass above this water body itself. So if let's say this is the Pacific and this is the region of South America. So basically, it will cool down the air immediately above it. As a result of that, here again, along the coastlines, we generally observe a conditions of inversion of temperature. And that brings about a lack of rainfall. So that is why you will find that majorly and mostly, on the western parts and the western coastline of continents, be it Africa, be it Australia, be it South America, we do come across desertified regions because of this lack of rainfall. So inversion of temperature can also be created by cold oceanic waters. And that is how we understand what this climatic influence is and what are its generalistic impacts. So that is all for this particular portion of temperature inversion. Now, let us take a few questions. Uh, one question, uh, do you think pressure has any effect on lap rate? Absolutely. The pressure conditions along with humidity conditions, that also ends up influencing the lap rate, the change in temperature. So that is why when I say that environmental lap rate, that is a very ideal condition. Generally, you will observe the lap rate, it is never around 6.5 degrees Celsius. It is either to the range of 7 or 8 or even 10 degrees Celsius or around 5 or 6 degrees Celsius. Uh, then another question, over polar areas, temperature inversion is normal throughout the year. That is because the ground surface is very, very cold because of lack of insulation. For almost a majority part of the year, the insulation is not sufficient to heat up the ground surface. That is why inversion is experienced throughout the year. What kind of inversion is prevalent in India? So in India, you will experience valley inversion to happen and we also experience surface inversion during the winter months. Uh, does valley inversion happen only at night? Yes. Under normal circumstances, it will occur only at night. Uh, is it due to valley inversion that Kashmir and Kulu are so cold? No. Kashmir and that Kulu region, etc. There you have multiple factors. Factors of latitude, factors of altitude. Both of them make that area very cold. And Kashmir valley in general is very broad. So there the valley inversion across the veil of Kashmir, that is not experienced. But then in small pocket, pockets and pocket burrows, there you will experience where the valley is very narrow. Then temperature inversion also affects ozone or not? 
No, it generally does not experience uh, or does not impact the ozone layer to that extent because inversion is experienced very closer to the surface and ozonosphere is beyond the altitude roughly around 20 to 50 kilometers. That is where you find the distribution of ozone. Okay. So that is where I will restrict the session for today. I hope that this has proven to be slight amount of value addition to your existing knowledge base. If you like the video, please click on the like, share and the subscribe button. Thank you.